Hey guys, welcome back to Impossible Color. Have you ever gone to a portrait shoot and you were so focused on the model, her hair, her dress, the lighting and the colors that you completely forgot about the background? I've seen so many photos that have trash in the background and just a lot of colors and clutter and trees and branches growing out of the model's neck and head. Well, today's tutorial is going to solve all of those problems for you. Here are five easy tools for removing background clutter. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just show you what I've done with these tools so you can get an idea of what we'll be heading towards. Here's the before and the after. First thing I'm going to do is just make a duplicate of the background layer just in case we ever want to go back to the original for some reason. Tool number one is the spot healing brush. You can find that over here. It's the first one in this section. And this one actually works really, really easily. All you do is adjust your brush size. Try to get it to a little bit larger than the area you want to remove. I'll zoom in there so you can see really clearly. Simply click, paint, and release. Just make sure that you have the content aware radio button selected here. This is uh, Adobe's algorithm that intelligently determines what should fill into that space. Sometimes you got to work it a little bit if it doesn't get it on the first try. So I'm just removing some of these. Maybe we'll try a little bit larger one. This tool usually works really well for small spots that are surrounded by another sort of solid color. But if you want to have a little bit more control, you can use the healing brush tool, which is pretty much the same thing, but you determine exactly where you want to go. So if I press down Alt on Windows, Option on a Mac, you can select an area and then just paint in where you want it fixed. So what it's actually doing is it's sampling some of the information that's over here and blending it in with the information in the area that the destination area. Okay, now the second tool that you may like to use, and this one works particularly well for larger areas, is the patch tool. You can find that in the same menu here. And the way that the patch tool works is you can make a selection just as you would with the lasso tool. And you can hold down shift and you can select another area along with it. Or perhaps you want to hold down alt and you can remove areas that you don't want. Then you click inside your selection and you move it to the area that you'd like to sample. So I'd like to replace those gray rocks with some more foliage somewhere around here. And I'm going to release that. You can see that some of this information has made its way into here, but you also see a little bit of the previous rocks that are showing through. There is a bit of a pattern there, and we'll be talking about how to deal with that a little bit later. Just to exaggerate what's actually going on with this tool, I'm going to select some of the water here and drag that into here and you can see that this texture is integrating with the background here. If we went back up to the healing brush tool and we did a sample, pretty much getting the same thing, just a different means of selecting it. Now the third tool that we're going to try out is the clone stamp tool. You can find that over here. This tool has actually been in Photoshop for quite some time so I'd be surprised if you weren't familiar with even the basics of it. But you're probably wondering is that tool obsolete now with the other ones? But it's actually really useful for a number of different reasons. If we were to go over to this rock here and say for example we wanted this edge to be in a lot further. 
if we use, let's say, the spot healing brush and apply that along the edge, thinking that we could get that water to kind of butt up against the edge of our paint selection there, the results are actually going to look pretty bad because it's trying to blend those that harsh contrast together and you get end up with a blurry ugly mess whereas if we use the clone stamp tool and we sampled here we get a nice clean edge Then once you have the clean edge, you can get rid of repeating areas that are much better handled by the other tools. Okay, the fourth tool that I'm going to show you is called the Content Aware Fill. You'll notice that when we're using these other tools, we've been selecting the Content Aware up here. I'm going to select all of these dark areas over here using the lasso tool but the great thing about this is you can actually use any of your selection tools let's say we'll do a little bit with the polygon selector and what else we have quick selection tool you could use grab some spots that you want to get rid of you could even use the magic wand tool if you like Although that selects a little bit more than we need for this example. Let's just do a few more spots as an example in a different area. Then you just hit edit, fill, and content aware. The more area that you select, the longer it's going to take as it's trying to calculate how to fill that in. And you can see that it handled some areas really well, other areas not so well. But if you ever get into those situations, you can just select them again and run it one more time. And there you go, it handled that pretty well. The beautiful thing about using the content aware fill is that for all of the tools that you have, to select your area, you can also use all of their options to help you. For example, you could use a feather, your anti-alias, let's say you did a selection on, and you wanted to refine the edges, get a nice feather on there, smooth it up, and then run your content aware. Whereas, whereas if you were to use all of the other tools I've been showing you, you just don't have that kind of flexibility. This is also great if you ever wanted to extend your canvas to the sides. Maybe you want to turn a portrait into a landscape or vice versa and you need to fill a little, little bit of extra information in the background. The fifth and final tool that I'd like to show you is the plain old brush tool. This is actually a really powerful one for what we're doing today. So if we select the brush tool and I'm gonna resize the brush using the brackets on your keyboard, the in bracket and the out bracket, it can go large and small. Then if you select Alt on your keyboard, Option on a Mac, you can sample any color that you would like using the eyedropper. I'm gonna pick something that's a little bit darker and I'm gonna paint the background. Right now I have it set to multiply. And what's that what that's doing is it's multiplying this color with the background so it's darkening in the areas that I'd like. But you can actually use any of these modes that you'd like. Even normal is good sometimes if you want to normalize all of the tones back here. Make them all somewhat consistent. You don't want to overpaint, or it's just going to look kind of like an airbrush mess back there. Undo that. Um, and another really useful one is actually color. If 
you can recall before when we used the patch tool down here we ended up with still a lot of that kind of gray gray blues from the rock but now we can just lightly paint that and now it blends in nicely with the background if you were to take the color brush and paint the entire background really strong with this you're going to get a very distinct look um, a very monochromatic look that's kind of fake but it may be the style that you're going for but if you want to avoid that let's undo that if you want to avoid that look i would try to do a few color samples from different areas just to mix it up and make it look a little bit more natural Now, if you don't feel comfortable using the brush tool directly on your canvas and see that as the final work, you can always just make another layer. And let's try it with normal. Pick a color. Let's fill this entire background. Don't worry too much. You can always edit this later because it's on a separate layer. And then you could adjust it using the blending mode on the layer itself. So let's try a multiply. It's really dark right off the bat, but we have the total flexibility of turning down the opacity. So this is how I got some of the dark background areas that I had before. You can also use a lot of advanced techniques such as apply image and you could make quick masks like this to select just do it on select areas but that's the basic idea is that you can paint directly on the layer and change the modes so that's it that's the fifth and final tool that I wanted to show you today but one of the most important things that I'd like to leave with you is that none of these tools need to be used in isolation it's the combination of them all together that creates the most realistic and the best look so I just reset the image so we can get a much better example to work with. And I'm going to start off by selecting the patch tool. We'll zoom in on this large rock over here. You can see that it's really distracting from the central image by drawing the eyes to the top left. And if I just did a direct sample say over here see what we get it's probably gonna be some kind of a blurry mess yeah it looks really fuzzy but let's say for example that we took our paintbrush and we did a color fill and tried that again it looks a little bit better but let's say we did a normal fill same thing looks much better but we still see that we have some problems you see we've got a, a rough top edge that I missed there use the spot healing tool to deal with that very easy to do and we may have some repeating shapes so we can, can add a little bit of variation in there by spot healing some of that and you can see that there's some color issues going on in there. So we can just grab our brush tool, set it to color that I showed you before, take a sample color, just blend that in nicely. So there you have it, five easy ways to reduce background clutter and how to use them in combination with each other. Thanks so much for watching Impossible Color. If you're having some Photoshop struggles and you just can't seem to get around some of your issues, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Maybe I'll even do a tutorial for you. Please click subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you next week.